So apparently the creator of Nier Automata, Yoko Taro, has said that Stellar Blade is better than Nier Automata. So I decided to watch Stellar Blade and see what my thoughts were and decided I'll take a look at Nier Automata as well and really just compare the two. So let's find out which one has the best animation. This is pretty basic. I wish they did a little bit more with the camera work, but I say that their anticipation for like the actual slash going through is really well done. So that in and of itself is a pretty strong fundamental. This pose is not super strong, but like that landing pose is pretty good. This is probably not the most powerful finisher. I'll have to see exactly what the other ones look like, but I think visually this is sort of like a weaker one. So we'll see what happens. What? Okay, that could have been cool. This is one of the ones where like the missed potential just disappoints me. The use of momentum here is really, really cool. That swing is just gorgeous. All the momentum, all the physics and everything that's going into this is just so good. But what does she do with it? She disappears into a ball. It's a little disappointing because the clarity dies after the coolest part. So this is like, boom, silhouette, super clear, momentum, super clear. And then all of that clarity is gone. All that momentum that was going left is now going forward instead of right. So it's really unfortunate that they kind of dropped the ball on this one because she can't really be read on what she's doing. Obviously, you understand what's happening afterwards, which is fine. But the actual kick itself doesn't feel that powerful, especially because from a body mechanics perspective, when she actually like tucks, it doesn't actually carry that much force. Like you actually would carry more force if you kept your legs straightened. Now you would speed up a little bit for a little bit, but you would want to straighten your legs pretty early on. And she doesn't do that. She actually keeps them bent all the way till the End, which means she's really just shock absorbing and she lands on the guy's stomach relatively peacefully, <laughs> which is like unfortunate. I'm not a big fan of it. I think the kick itself at the end is like cool and the slow mo is cool, but it feels a little cheap compared to like what it could have been. My impression of the game so far is that like there's a lot of potential here. I think it does a lot of cool things, but there's something missing about the specific intent behind some of these finishers that feels like maybe they had done some really cool sort of like real time choreo things and then threw in some slow mo afterwards, which kind of ruined the rhythm them a little bit and that's just a guess Ugh, I don't like this one either. This one has a couple of issues with it. This pose doesn't have a lot of power behind it. It looks like they're trying to emphasize a downwards swing. I would actually prefer that her back be more arched and that her weapon become more on back. Instead, it's sort of pointing forward the whole time and it's tangented the camera, which means that the camera is like foreshortening the blade like crazy and you can barely see it. So the thing that we're supposed to focus on is barely visible. It doesn't really work as a silhouette. And that pullout is kind of just like, just not that satisfying. <laughs> the energy flow just isn't there. That was all right too. I think I'm just not a big fan of these reverse grip stabs just because like, I'm not sure if they're taking advantage of the reverse grip quite as much as they should. Like it's cool conceptually, but it's just, it's not being taken advantage of visually. This could easily have more anticipation here. So if you just like had the blade or the hand drawn out more this way, instead of having it be like an acute angle the whole time, don't be afraid to give it a 90 degree angle. And so if you do that, you can have a lot more anticipation here and just push it like visually. It may not be like 100% physically accurate, but it would work better for like this particular windup. After she does that, like this is cool, but I would actually hold this pose a little bit longer. Like right here, especially because the camera is moving so fast, keep the sword pointing this way for just a little bit longer so you can really emphasize this change. So if the hands are over here and then by the time the camera is over here, then she starts revving the engine, so to speak, or whatever you want to call this, then maybe it's going to have like the hit that it needs to. But other than that, it's just falling flat a little bit. Yo, yo. Yo, that one was actually cool. Holy shit. This actually is a really cool example of something that kind of like defies what you would normally do for like real life. So like this kick up here, normally you would want to bring the head down to the kick as hard as possible. And like you would want to time that with the kick because you're maximizing the force by bringing them together. What she's actually doing here is interesting. She's bringing it down and then she sort of kicks it back up, which like physically doesn't really do much. There's not much resistance there. He just sort of goes back and like that's whatever. But like visually, I love the composition of this. So like what you're actually doing is you're getting the the momentum of her body to go upwards and then sort of float here and because you're doing that i'd say this like a lack of physical accuracy with like the knee going up and like pushing everything up instead of like pushing this down is worth it like they know what they're doing here visually this is really compelling so this is what i'm talking about like when you really like sacrifice sort of physical accuracy for these visually appealing components of the animation this kick right here 
The arc and the anticipation here is gorgeous. This right here is a great anticipation pose. You can see what's going to happen. Like this is a really, really clear silhouette. And like that's already like been set up for the previous frames. And this like whole like pose twist and everything is very clear. So you can kind of understand what's going on. So you know that this is about to hit. As soon as it's made super clear to you, it hits and it hits exactly where you expect it to. So this is what you want for anticipation. You want to pay off the expectation that you're setting for the audience. So now this arc is just so satisfying and it clears it by the way if you notice in like two frames like look at that that's a super fast kick super powerful kick take a look at the the end result like this guy bounces off the thing and floats in the air again with the same concept about going up and floating in the air using this same mechanic here in the enemy's animation afterwards right same thing up float and then we have the final drop kick which is my least favorite part of the whole thing. <laughs> and the reason why I don't like this is, again, because of the silhouette. This is just a small thing. Drop kicks can be done very well, but I just think, like, because this arm is in the way, you actually don't see the knees, and so it becomes a little bit unclear, especially because, quite frankly, her butt is in the way. <laughs> you can't see the legs. You can talk about maybe this is a little too large for the visual... No, it's fine. It's, it's just that the, like, the camera angle doesn't really support it. So I think the legs here could be made a little bit more clear. The camera angle could move a little bit this way, maybe, so you could see the silhouette better. Or maybe you could just not put the arm here. Easily the arm could be here and the sword could be here. Like that's totally fine. It could be behind the head. That would still look really good. And then you'd be able to see the legs just fine and it would have a really nice clear silhouette. I really like this overall though. This is actually one of my favorite finishes so far. Yes! Yes! Okay, so this one's great. So, like, this anticipation is fantastic. She clearly shows weight on carrying the enemy. This is also a great pose. Like, like, look at how much she's leaning for this. This really shows how heavy the guy is, right? If you actually take a look at the center of mass here, so, like, this is the center of mass at the moment, because the mass on this side is equal to the mass on this side. So, this shows how strong she really is. A lot of the force vectors that she's using from the friction of her feet, from the strength of her muscles here, like, this makes her feel really really strong but this guy's also really really heavy but then they also do this interesting thing where she like tackles him too which is cool so i like the fact that they don't actually throw the guy completely they just sort of like flip him over and then she tackles him which is such a great use of weight they're not like making her canonically way stronger in these finishers than she is in like the rest of like the fights so she's not just like throwing him for free he's still very heavy to the point where she has to tackle him at the end which is great and then this part is fantastic she clearly just perfectly transitions to this like slice which shows that she was like planning that from the beginning, which is a really, really cool combination of moves that pays off really well. And then my favorite part is this pose. Like this pose is just gorgeous. Look at the clarity of like the silhouette there, right? You can see everything that you need to see. I don't know where the fuck the hand is, but other than that, it's like great, <laughs> right? Oh, it's Master Hunter. This one's interesting. This is a good example of how I wish the other one was. This one is like an over the head emphasis here. So this one kind of lacks that overhead emphasis. This doesn't feel like it's ready to do like a downward strike. It's really unclear. And I think the camera work has a lot to do with that. But this one here has that obvious downward strike. So the anticipation works really well. This pose could be a little bit better. I kind of wish that they just had her a little bit more upright. It's a small, small thing, but because she's spinning on an axis vertically, it'd be really cool if they did this. And it would actually work in their favor because like everything else feels really good. I like the angle of these feet and everything like that that feels cool because it's like discus shaped and kind of like comes out a little bit right which is pretty cool but like because there, she's slightly bent it becomes a little bit less clear where her momentum is and doesn't feel as clean so you can kind of see the arc here is also a little bit messy and dirty where's the sword it goes in front of her and now it's behind her yeah <laughs> so like if that was made a little bit cleaner just was one spin and she kept the sword in the same rotation and then she had a bit of a straighter torso here right so you transition to that to have like the axis rotation to line up with it that would be fantastic overall I'd say that's pretty good. What do I think about the animations overall? I do think like generally speaking, it's got its target audience. <laughs> I think the target audience won't really care how perfect the animations are. I think for what they're doing, it's fantastic. I think they have some really cool ideas. I mean, let's, let's take a look at this one again because this one's gorgeous. I want more of that. Maybe they have more in the official release. I don't know. That would be really, really cool. More kicking, more body mechanic stuff, and less like reverse grip stabbing, because I think that's not quite their strong suit. I actually kind of want to look at Nier animations and kind of compare it, because Yoko Taro himself said that this is supposed to be better than Nier Automata. I just want to look at the animations and judge that. 
So she's able to kick the spear, swing around the spear, and then kick the sword out during the swing. And then they just sort of come back. Nier Automata is actually the one who popularized the materializing sword so that you could have all this creativity and freedom to do whatever combos you wanted where the swords would just come back afterwards. And it's such a beautiful use of that trope of like these floating swords and materializing swords and just like being able to use her entire body to do like all the combos that she needs. What? So what's great about this is like they're able to use this idea of floating weapons so well. So we know the weapon floats because that's how it sheaths. Now she's using it by holding it. But like, take a look at what happens next, right? So she actually holds it here, throws it out there. It comes back like a boomerang. Then she holds it, catches it, swings, but then she throws it out again. This freedom to be able to levitate this sword and move it around is already established in the sheathing animation and then really expanded upon and taken advantage of in the combat animation. It's such a beautiful combination of like visual clarity and creativity. I mean, look at that. It's such an amazing way to show how heavy the sword is and keeping her graceful at the same time. Okay, so I haven't really seen a whole lot of the combat animation to be fair. Like if we take a look at the combat animation here for Stellar Blade. I'm not seeing a whole lot of creativity in the combos and the attack animations. They're good, but like the creativity is not quite there. Nier Automata's creativity in the animations is actually, dare I say it, stellar. So honestly, man, I cannot say that Stellar Blade is better than Nier Automata. I don't agree with Yoko. I'm sorry. Uh, Nier Automata is a masterpiece. Like to be fair, Yoko is probably saying that from a story perspective. That's very possible, but also Yoko is a female appreciator. <laughs> There's a lot to appreciate in Stellar Blade, I'm sure, for his personal preference. I like Nier better. What can I say? Anyway, if you like watching me talk about this animation stuff, you might like this video where I talk about Honkai Star Rail animation. And if you subscribe, you'll see all the next ones I make.